Hello, hello, Total Developers back again with another video. And today we will be continuing our Solana uh, DevNet uh, and transfer uh, with Node.js guide. So without further ado, let's get started. So first things first is that we need to go ahead and download the Solana CLI, right? And I am on Windows at the moment, so I'm going to go on to uh, Solana Labs um, CLI install and follow their guide to install on Windows. Um, but there is a guide for Mac up here in Linux, if that is your preference. Nonetheless, I went ahead and done that. So let's just check our version. And as you can see, it is installed correctly. So perfect, right? So now that we have that all settled, we now need to download um, or let's say create a folder and call it Solana, right? And then create a new file in it and just call it index.js. Now that we've done that, uh, let's navigate to our folder. As you can see, we have already navigated to Solana, folder name Solana. And then what we want to do now is run npm install uh, at sign Solana slash web3.js, right? And with that being said, it's gonna go ahead and install the necessary no modules and packages and pass it into our uh, folder. And as you can see, we have that package.json with our dependencies installed. And now we can go ahead and get started with the coding. So awesome. Um, first things first, you know, right off the bat, let's go ahead and do some imports. Just so we have everything that we need. And let's call it Solana Web. Three, right? And then go ahead and require. Require. Go ahead and get that package that we just downloaded. Awesome. So next thing to do now is let's go ahead and create a couple of functions, right? So let's create a function to connect to the Solana. Dev that, right? So in order to do this, let's create an async function using that async keyword. And let's call it connect to Solana, right? Very simple, very easy. And it takes no parameters. But inside of this function, let's go ahead and create a variable, call it connection. And that equals new Solana with three dot connection, and then let's pass in the arguments or parameters, Solana, web3 dot cluster, API URL, and then pass into that the DevNet string. And then after that, we pass, we also pass in a parameter called, or string, uh, with the value of confirmed in it, right? So with that being said, let's go ahead and log to the console that we've connected to the Solana DevNet. Perfect. And let's also go ahead and return that connection. Awesome. All right. So with that being said, our function here is essentially connecting to the Solana DevNet. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way. And we are then logging to the console that we connected and returning that connection value, right? Perfect. So next thing to do is uh, create a function to generate 
a new key pair, right? So we need a, a public key, right? So that's our wall address and a private key, you know, to send transactions. Uh, and to, in order to do that, let's go ahead and create a function. Call it generate key pair. And it takes no parameters. And inside of it, we want to create a constant and call it key pair. And let that equal to Solana Web3 dot key pair dot generate. Awesome. So that's going to essentially generate our key pair. And let's just log our value to the console. And we could say new wallet address and then pass in that key pair dot public key. And then we want to pass it to a string, right? Like so. Perfect. And then at the end of this, we want to just return that key pair constantly from up here. Awesome. Next thing to do is create a function to airdrop, right? So we need some soul in our wallet, right? So we can't send anything without any funds, right? So we need to create a function to ask Solana to give us some test tokens or an airdrop to our DevNet wallet, right? So perfect. With that being said, let's create an asynchronous function with a name of airdrop. So, and then we want to pass in two parameters, right? So we want to pass in connection as well as public key. With well, that being said, it's constant. Let's create constant and let's call it airdrop signature. And let that equal to await connection dot request airdrop. All right. And then we want to pass in public key as well as the Solana Web3 dot constant, which is lamb ports underscore underscore per underscore soul. Perfect. And this is essentially connecting to the DevNet and asking it to send us some um, Solana and passing in, you know, its own customized um, port addresses and stuff and constant variables. So it knows, you know, it keeps, it's keeping track of it on that dev uh, blockchain. So with that being said, let's go ahead and await uh, that connection as we passed in from the parameter up here and wait that connection that confirm transaction. And then we we'll pass in our airdrop signature from above to that. And then let's go ahead and console log a response so we know what happened. And it's essentially just gonna say airdrop complete wallet balance. Awesome. Great. So the next thing to do is go ahead and create a function to transfer our soul, right? So we need to create a function to transfer our Solana to another wallet. Perfect, right? So let's create an asynchronous function. Let's name it transfer Solana or Sol. And then it's going to take in a couple parameters here, right? So let's go ahead and define that. The first parameter is connection. The next is from key pair. The next is recipient public key string. And the next is the amount of soul we want to send. 
And now that we have all those written out, let's go ahead and work on our function. First thing to do here is create a constant and let's call it the recipient public key, right? And we can grab this by saying new Solana web3 dot public key, capital P public key, and then pass into that the recipient's public key string, right? So essentially, we're going to grab that public key and convert it into a way that Solana can read it with those uh, built-in functions from that library that we, uh, or the package that we installed. The next thing to do is create a constant called transaction. Let's set this to Solana Web3 dot transaction. dot add and then let's go ahead and say solana web3 dot system program dot transfer and let's go ahead and pass in an object and some values in the object that we want to instead instantiate or from a key and that's set to from key pair dot public key, like so. The next thing to do is create another value in our object and call it to pub key. And that's essentially the recipient's public key. And then we want to create another value in our object called lamb ports. And that is slon.web3 dot lamb ports per soul times the amount of soul as it's just essentially converting into a way that it can be used or it can be read on the blockchain. And with that being said, we now want to go ahead and Create another variable, right? Here is it, and the name is signature. And this is essentially just going to be an await of our Solana with our Web3. Um, or await, we're going to use the await keyword of Solana Web3 dot send and kind of confirm transaction. And in that function, we want to pass in our connection. We also want to pass in our transaction. And we also want to pass in our e pair, right? But as a, an array or an object or an array that can be uh, de instantiated, or we could break it up. And at the end of all this, let's go ahead and log our signature. So we could say transaction successful with signature. Passing that signature, right? Perfect. Now that we have all of our functions created and written out. We now we want to create like a main method, right? Or a, fun or a function that automatically runs. Just to test our uh, our program, right? And we could do this by creating a function that essentially runs automatically with, or a main method, right? And again, we could do this by saying, or we can do it by linking everything together, right? So we could do this by 
creating open brackets or open and close brackets and passing in the value async. And then let's do an arrow function. And then at the end of this arrow function, we want to essentially do another open and close brackets. So it essentially calls itself, All right? So inside of this, let's do a const connection. And that essentially is going to use our connect to Solana function from above. Let's go ahead and test that to see if it works. As you can see, we got the message connected to the Solana blockchain, no errors. The next thing to do is go ahead and get that key pair. And to do that, we can say const key pair equals generate key pair. Let's go ahead and test that again to see if everything runs. And as you can see, we created a new wallet address. So that worked. Next thing to do now is to go ahead and await our airdrop. And we want to pass in that connection that we just created as well as our key pair dot public key. And let's go ahead and see if that runs correctly. As you can see, we got an error here. It's saying that we had too many requests. Oh, we've already requested an airdrop, right? So this is correct. We have requested an airdrop already today. So we can't, we have to wait 24 hours for this faucet to refill. But as you can see, it still works. We're just can't connect to it at the moment. With that being said, let's go ahead and finish this uh, uh, program or this uh, tutorial with another wait and then we'll transfer our soul right so once we do get that airdrop of our soul into our wallet it's gonna we're gonna then call our transfer soul function and then we're gonna pass in our connection as well as our key pair and then finally we want to pass in our recipients or the yeah the recipient wallet address, right? And then we want to pass in the amount that we want to send, right? So in this case, we're just going to send point or 0 0.01 Solana. Awesome. All right, so we can successfully complete our program. If you would like the code, go ahead and check the blog and stay tuned for our next video. Until then, happy coding.